Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope everyone's having a great start to your day. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a subject that not a lot of people like to talk about. You, you know, either you've been burned before when it comes to selling your coins, or perhaps you're just not having any luck selling your coins. Not that you were any part of any experience whatsoever trying to sell it, whether it's through e commerce, you know, eBay, Facebook, Craigslist, whatever. And of course, um, the standard method of selling coins is taking it to the coin dealer, the coin shop. What's the deal? They're either not giving you anything for it or they just refuse to buy it. So we're going to explore the five reasons why you cannot sell your coins, especially in 2020. Um, as we move into this new decade, of course, there's going to be things that are going to be changing, um, evolving, so to speak. When it comes to um, the business of dealing in collectibles, maybe not specifically coins, but everything. All right, we've been kind of heavily reliant on the information that's provided to us on the uh, interweb. Uh, and we're going to try and um, take some of the information and put it together and kind of drill down into what I like to call the common sense practice. Um, whatever you do, whatever you buy, whatever you sell, all right, keep in mind some of these uh, important steps when you're going to sell your coins. So I have a few, uh, I guess, subject coins that we're going to use when we're talking about just everything to kind of keep it brief and just, you know, narrow down to specific subjects. We have a graded, really nice Mercury Dime. Uh, we have a 1970 proof set, a lot of these floating around. And uh, just some random penny that was found in circulation. It looks neat, and you want to try and make a few bucks off of it, whatever the case is. So let's go ahead and dive right in, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize the screen. You're still going to see me uh, on the bottom right-hand side, but um, it's always too good to know exactly where the market is, okay, specifically precious metals. Dylan Gage is a great website that I like to use. Some people use Coinflation as well. Okay, they actually have an app that you can upload onto your phone. And um, it is an indispensable resource. Okay, if you know exactly where Precious Metals kind of sits, um, it plays very favorably to the coin market. Um, Ten years ago, of course, we were dealing with $50 silver. We were dealing with gold that shot up near to $3,000. Man, it was a, to a lot of people, especially to the sellers, it was an incredible time in history, okay? For not only precious metals, but also the coin market. Again, they work hand in hand when, uh, you know, uh, when prices are up, everything's up. When prices are down, sad face. But anyways, the number one reason why that you can't sell a coin is real simple, okay? We're going to start out with the obvious stuff first um we're asking way too much money guys asking way too much money now there is a huge emphasis on the information that is out there um especially in your social media specifically youtube is a big one okay i i'm kind of like a, a creature of habit uh, on certain things of course i do the monday mark report so i throw out these i would say more than unrealistic realistic expectations of certain coins that hit just record amounts of money. And then, I guess some of you probably feel like, oh man, if that can sell for $7,000, I could find one too and sell that one for $7,000. So, using a few examples that I've come across on my emails, because I receive just an absorbent amount of emails, questions about this and that, how do I sell it? I want to sell this because I saw it on your channel, or I saw it on Couch Collectibles, or JB's Coins, or whoever the case may be, uh, because in the grand scheme of things, it's all big hot news. When a coin sells for $2,500, and it's barely 10 years old, okay, it, it gives you a lot of cause to pay attention to exactly where the market is. Now, that is, modern coins in general is a very... Um, kind of like very, I would say, on the risk scale, it sits toward the top end of the risk scale. Um, you have a lot of coins, obviously, that they reach a certain grade value, and then they just go just bonkers. So, I have eBay, and I thought this would be a good 
kind of like tool to use. I use eBay when it comes to uh, properly gauging or throwing out a barometer check of what coins are selling for and for how much. So let's say we are interested in this Lincoln Cent. It's like, man, it's such a high grade coin. All right. And, and I know it's got to sell for a thousand, two thousand dollars. Um, okay. And it's just, I want to sell it. I want, I want to be able to capitalize on all of that. So we're going to go to us coins, see all. And, um, in this case, this is a, uh, 1975. All right. Let's see how much a 1975 Lincoln. And then I'm going to put PCGS. And the reason why I put that in is obviously your coin has to be graded for it to be worth the maximum amount of money. All right, people need to know that it is indeed the top pop coin for what you have. If you have something that's subpar or mid-level, all right, you're not going to get the two, three thousand dollars that you're expecting. All right, so highest price first. Of course, we start out with an error. Ha, huh, you know, very appropriate. All right, so that's not going to work. Let's see here. Sold items. You might have to transition to a different date um of lincoln cent all right so we have a 1975 pcgs mid-state 67 red all right of course that's a pretty nice grade but it's sold at a traditional auction format for 81 dollars and five cents so when you go to grade coins that are raw all right you go ahead and send this off to pcgs or ngc you need to um you need to know exactly what the grade level needs to be in order for it to be profitable okay uh mid state 67 no doubt about it would be the minimum grade that i would need to make a few bucks you're not going to get rich off of selling a 67 uh at 81 dollars okay you're, you're gonna make probably you're gonna net probably 30 40 dollars by the time it's all set and done but you just need to know exactly where we're at now the big question is, is that this particular listing is a auction format. It could be a three day, five day, seven day, whatever. Okay. So the coin value, the market value is set by the amount of bids that come in all the way to the end, to the last second. All right. So where the whole asking too much comes in is if you don't list it as a traditional auction format and instead like this listing above it, you put in a buy it now all right we, which is common people are like oh i want to sell this mid-state 67 that sold for 81 dollars, and i want to put it up for 9.99.99 or best offer all right that's gonna scare a lot of people away okay you're asking way too much money for the market my personal recommendation is that you research the price trends throughout the last about five years you're gonna get probably the most accurate amount of information that way. All right, if you use eBay and you go into completed sales, it's only going to pull up the last 90 days of archives. All right, you could use other third-party sites like Watch Count um, to determine how much an actual best offer price sold. Or if you wanted to look at that listing from two years ago, you know, you could do that as well. But with Watch Count, you do have to pay a monthly service fee to uh, be able to use the features and benefits of that site. Um, there are a few other sites that you could use, uh, you know, when it comes to pulling up old eBay archived sales of these coins. Using eBay in conjunction with some of the other sites, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Heritage Auctions. That's a great one. All right, so you would go under Departments, Coins and Currency, U.S. Coins, and... You could go into all sold, small cents, because that's what a Lincoln cent is. And then we're just going to go to Lincoln. All right. And then type in the date of the coin that you're trying to sell. All right. So we're going to do 1969. Or actually, let's let's do like 65. All right. Hit enter. You're in the sold area here. So you're going to do highest. You want to know what the highest value of this coin has sold for in time. Now we have a proof coin or SMS. So we're going to go all the way down till we get to the first mint state business strike coin. And it's going to be this one that sold in 2014 for $998.75. Few things 
that come into play here. This listing is nearly six years old. All right. The opportunity that this coin will still be worth that kind of money is going to be small unless there has been any other coins that have graded at a 67 red of this 1965 Lincoln cent. All right. Oftentimes this value will drop. Okay. So uh, if I put this coin up on eBay, for instance, for $999.99, you're not, probably not going to sell it because it's way outside of the market based off of prices or expectations of 2020. All right, so you're asking way too much. Same premise goes with walking into a deal, uh, a coin dealer with your product. Like this mint set right here, I originally paid $20 for it back in 2009, and I want my $20 now. Well, if you go into a coin dealer with that mindset, especially if you're in a position where you actually need to liquidate these to pay bills, to pay off your bookie, or whatever the case may be, you know, to, to put food on the table for your family, all right, you have to be a little bit more lenient in the prices because it changes with the market. As we all know, again, the reason why I showed you the Dylan Gage website is you got to know exactly where the precious metals market is because, again, it plays heavily hand-in-hand -hand with the overall valuation of these coins all right so that's the first reason as to why you can't sell your coins is that you're asking way too much money the next reason is you have a coin okay like this lincoln penny right here that you want to sell and take advantage of that thousand dollars and of course it's encapsulated in this slab right here this is a pcgs standard slab with a light blue label all right the coin only sells if and only if it's in the slab, all right? So, obviously, your coin is not graded. That's the other reason why you can't sell your coins, especially when you're dealing with high-end coins or possibly you have some of those 200-year-old uh, early federal age coins that, um, you know, at some point have been counterfeited in the past. So, this generally guarantees that, <coughs> that you're going to have the grade for the coin, or it's going to, in a way, because people do cap, uh, counterfeit the slabs too, is that it's going to guarantee the actual authenticity of the coin. All right. So because your coin's not graded, is going to be a huge reason why that you're not going to be able to sell your coin, especially on e-commerce sites like eBay, Heritage Auctions. You know, Heritage Auctions, you send out a raw coin, they're going to want to grade it. Now, if they feel like it's not going to grade to the level of, a 65 mint state 67 red they're just going to return it okay with a note saying this does not meet the criteria and um so on and so forth okay so that that's where it kind of comes into play as well uh you would be surprised graded coins all right command a lot more money because the the grade is locked in for that coin especially when it comes to the top pops or if it comes to a uh, variety attribution or strike designation like full steps Full split bands, full bell lines, things like that. Full head for standing liberty quarters. Um, it's just important that if you have a high dollar coin, that you get it authent uh, authenticated. Now, you have PCGS, you have NGC, you also have Annex. If all else fails and you don't want to spend a ridiculous amount, amount of money for the fees, go ahead and get it graded through Annex. It's just as good, and they're fantastic, and their grading is Bam, right down the middle, uh, and you're not going to spend an arm and a leg. Pretty cool. All right, so the number three reason as to why you can't sell your coins, and uh, this one right here, not a lot of people even think about it, okay? But your coin is not attributed correctly. What does that mean? Well, all right, let's go back to eBay, okay? Because I think this will best define exactly what I mean. When a coin is not attributed, let's say you're selling... Uh, a specific type of variety and you want to take advantage of the fact that it is a variety and you want to sell it for the most amount of money that you can or sell it for the exact market value for that particular coin all right so actually we'll go back here to the main screen so what do you guys say uh do you want to take a look at I'm trying to figure out just like a nice, even-keeled kind of like variety that a lot of people like to sell, but are commonly misattributed as um, 
you know, something else. So let's do 92, 1992 Lincoln, close AM. All right, that one's a pretty pricey coin all on its own. And lo and behold, we're going to use this first listing, 1992 close AM penny. First of all, why is it only $50 with eight hours left? This thing should be $1,000 based off of the actual grade of the penny. I mean, it looks nice. Nice mint state. It looks like it's in red condition. Um, but really, it's misattributed. It's not a close AM. There is a distinct gap between the A and M in America. All right, and because of that, this individual has zero bids. And first of all, right here, if you're a brand new seller, you got to pump this up a bit because feedback plays a huge role also. Kind of like a 3A, 3B for this particular lesson. If you're a brand new seller and you're selling a $10,000 coin, all right, that's a huge red flag. All right, people are more than likely not going to be able to trust you because you have no sales history. But this coin is clearly misattributed. It's got a wide gaping gap between the A and M. And furthermore, the design of the G initial and FG is completely wrong. It's got the, the down serif, and uh, it's supposed to be straight. It's a bigger G, and the FG initial sit just slightly further out from the base of the monument. So this is, this is another clear telltale sign that you cannot sell your coins is because it is drastically misattributed. Here's another 92D. Close AM, yet yeah, it's a buy it now for 20 bucks. Nobody buys close AMs for 20 bucks. I'm sorry. There's just a whole lot of various red flags in here. And um, when you misattribute a coin, a variety, or an error, okay, you're not going to get any sort of listing action on there you're not going to sell the coin uh like here's another 92 right here um close am that's got that gap this is this is one of those seeing eye varieties that's really easy to determine when you look at it with your naked eye and uh this one right here has that gap and it's also got that little little uh notch serif that goes below the g um, again, with all those things considering, yeah, this is not going to sell for 350 bucks. All right. And there's no returns. Yeah. Like I want to trust myself with that. Now here's a genuine legit one. Of course it is a, um, PCGS authenticated coin. So there should be no questions as to the authenticity of this coin. And there you go. A and M are touching at the bottom. Okay. Just like that. And take a look at the initial as well. See the G, the formation of the G is different. Plus the initials sit further out from the base of the monument. All right, so it's important as you go through the steps of finding a coin, identifying what it is, whether you're using like a forum chat page or you're um, part of one of the many great groups on Facebook. Um, one of my favorites is the Q&A, okay? It's ran by Ken PV and... Um, a uh, couple of the other guys, Coin Help You is on there as well. Uh, Shea Hoffmaster. A great website or a great uh, Facebook page to use. Uh, reach out to some of those professionals to get an idea of what you have. Okay, don't say like, hey, I got this coin. What do you think? Or you're like, eh, you know, I'm a little fuzzy on the details of this type of coin. Uh, what do I have to do? Yes. All right, so that's the number three reason why you're not selling your coins. Okay, number two, um, this one, again, not, not a lot of people kind of think about it, but number two is that there is just too much supply or low demand for a specific coin. All right, I think the, the best kind of like subject that we could use for this type of thing is going to be 2019 West Point Quarter. All right, as we be, begin to see a new wave of 2020 West Point quarters with a neat little V75 privy mark on them. All right, what does that do to all of the 1,700 plus listings of 2019 West Point quarters? All right, obviously you're going to have a hem hemorrhaging effect on this because you have 1,700 coins. People are kind of like, oh, okay, they're pushing this aside now because they're waiting for the february 6th release of the first west point quarter and nobody wants this okay it's just a bad time to buy these right now um you know especially for 10 bucks 
Okay, I, I've always said that these are going to drop in value for a while, and it's going to take some time. It's going to trend flat for a while before you begin to see a little uptick. It might be five years, it might be ten years. But this right here, there is way too much supply in both the raw coins and also graded coins. Again, understanding the market is going to help you determine whether you ought to sell the coin or whether you have to sell the coin as a traditional auction. It'll guarantee you money, but it's not going to be the money that you expect. That's the unfortunate part to this whole thing. Um, but knowing the market in general is going to play a huge role in how successful you'll be when you're selling coins, okay? Because there is a distinctive difference between supply and demand, market value, you know, all those things. You can't very well ask $60 a coin for the Frank Church River of No Return West Point quarter like it did the first week of release, all right? It's unrealistic because the more supply that enters the marketplace, the more likely that the demand will drop. Now we're in a new year. A new 2020 West Point quarter is upon us. And then there you go. Okay, it kind of uh, kind of kills the value a little bit on some of these coins. In addition to the demand. Okay, this right here, the, this West Point Idaho quarter, you could ask $5. You're not going to sell nearly as many of these West Point quarters today uh, at that price level as you would have back maybe in early December. Okay, so uh, another thing to keep in mind, all right, just too much supply, low demand. And the final reason why you can't sell your coins in 2020 uh, or just in general is the whole e-commerce effect, all right? Being able to sell coins online like this or Facebook or a forum chat page and you put up absolutely horrible pictures, absolutely bad images. This one right here, is pretty bad for West Point Quarter. Okay, there's too much white balance going on here, which effectively drains the the image to, to where it's all white. You don't know how lustrous the coin is going to be. Therefore, people are more apt to stay away from coins with bad pictures because you just don't know where you're going to get. You know, it's like a box of chocolates. But you go down the list, you find some of these pictures here. I mean, some of them are really good. All right, and the real key to um, crisp, clean pictures, of course, is a clean lens. So if you're using your iPhone, for example, make sure you uh, even wipe wipe the lens off with your shirt before you use it, and then utilize the ability to before you snap the picture to zoom in. Okay, without getting too close, you don't want to get too close to the coin because when you see the image get fuzzy, you're not going to have very good uh, success. Uh, taking a good quality picture. So here's another one right here where you have a really shiny table and then your light source, I think they probably use the flash on their camera action and it has uh, put this solar flare look right in the middle of the picture which effectively kind of like distracts from the actual image. But I always come across a lot of pictures um, that are less than desirable. And because of that, you know, uh, it makes the listing uh, unprofessional, and it's usually something that I steer clear of. Um, it stinks. I, I, you know, new new sellers need to have some sort of uh, level of just like, I, I don't know, uh, ability to sell their coins regardless. But, you know, you have to kind of meet halfway with tremendous pictures with good pictures, people can also look at the actual devices and just make sure that it's not a counterfeit. All right, that's important. People sell old, old coins all the time. And old coins, especially the key dates from the 1800s, 1700s, they are counterfeited. Okay, so um, when you put up an accurate, very crisp, very clear picture with perfect lighting, will make all the difference in the world. Okay, you will have a much higher percentage chance of selling your coin because of that, all right? So there's going to be a number of things that, that I obviously missed, all right, um, on the list. These are kind of like what I feel like are kind of like the top five main ones, okay? Again, it's kind of like overlapping coin dealer sales and uh, actual e-commerce, you know, eBay, you know, anything where you have to go online, post pictures and sell. I mean, we could go all day with this, okay? We could also talk about the fact that... Um, 
let's see what else would, would be a huge factor in why you can't sell your coins. Uh, time of the year. Believe it or not, coin collecting is a very seasonal type of um, thing. Uh, coins generally sell the best before Christmas. Okay, there's a period of time right around after Halloween and Christmas where coin sales, precious metal, metal sales, hike up in value. Okay, after the first of the year, preferably sometime in like mid-January up to about March, when people are getting their tax return money, that's where you're going to see another uptick in the values of coins. Now, the dead zone is the summertime. You want to try and avoid selling coins if you absolutely avoid it during the summer. Okay, that's another huge thing that kind of plays a, a minor-ish role because you, you could still sell coins in the off-season. And you could still sell coins during the peak season for a lot less than what the market value is. Um, again, you take into consideration everything I talked about and you're going to put yourself in a much better shape financially when you go to sell your coins but anyways i hope this has uh, helped out uh, again ebay great source for determining what the true market value is um, to the minute pcgs.com is a great website to use for pricing of graded coins they got that uh that price guide on there utilize that as well of course pcgs ngc and annex are my top three preferred Grading companies to use, depending on your price level, your budget, um, they can all accommodate you in some regard. And uh, utilize every bit of social media sites to uh, get the correct attribution down for your coins. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, hate to beat a dead horse, but you know the, the this is a, a new decade. We're gonna, you know we talked about some of the things that uh, have have change or going to change as a result of new programs and uh, you know just people are going to continue to uh, favor more e-commerce business all right but understanding exactly you know where everything lies in both the brick and mortar and e-commerce is important okay it really de depends on how quickly you need the money back to you all right if you want less money go to a coin dealer okay they are conditioned to go off of the coin dealer newsletter because they need to make money too, all right? They operate, obviously, a lease, all right? And they have uh, utilities that they need to pay for and advertising, so there's a lot of costs associated with that. But quick money at the coin dealer for a lot less, or if you wanted to be patient, go ahead and sell them on a site like eBay, and you're in good shape. So thanks again, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell for instant notification. As always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together have a wonderful time with the hobby. Enjoy collecting, and I will see you next time.